This brings me down to an episode of uh, um, Love is Blind that I think everybody should watch. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't watched it before, my name is Melis Jogiet. Um, I haven't fully understood what all of this channel is about yet, but my, my thing does say um, I discovered who God made me um, and everyone else's opinion doesn't matter. So basically I'm talking about what I feel like led to talk about or what I'm passionate about in the moment. Claudia is sitting in the room as always. Um, she's busy right now, so we're going to leave her to do that. <laughs> but... Um, I wanted to talk about something that I'm going to get into the topic, but when I, we started recording this just now and I thought I needed to start this off with the foundation of why I felt like talking about this is important. So um, one of the things that gets to me about the way that we teach people, especially in school, is because we don't teach them about healing, toxic behavior and common sense. I feel like common sense should be something that just we, we literally have to make textbooks for it because it's obviously not natural anymore. Um, but one of the reasons we need to learn about healing and toxic behavior is because that undoubtedly every single family has one or two toxic family members. It, it's unavoidable in 2023. We've gotten so used to these toxic behaviors that they've become familiar to us, that we pick up some of those traits. We, all of us have toxic traits, but there are just some people who operate from a place of manipulation. And in the... Hundreds of people that I've met in the last year, every one of them knows someone who is fundamentally, fundamentally toxic and manipulative and haven't even recognized it until I've had a conversation with them. And the reason why is because we don't teach people how to identify it. It is the craziest thing to me to have a conversation with someone, they explain an interaction they've had with someone else, and I'm just seeing red blankets flying all over the place. And usually I'm, I'm giving them enough time to listen to the things that have been happening in their friendships, relationships, whatever. And at the end of it, I'm just like, you do realize there's a lot of red flags here that you don't seem to identify because you are familiar with it, either because it's the way that you were brought up or this seems like healthily exciting to you when in fact there's a lot of things that need to be delved into with the way that they talk, the way that they move and the things that they do and say to you and then say to other people. So I'm, I'm, I, what this last two years process and learning about narcissism, um, toxic traits, human behavior, really just doing, I did such in-depth personal study on this behavior that it's very easy for me to identify now. I mean, one or two, three conversations in, I'm like, no, nope, I see what the problem is. And sometimes I try to address it with the person. Um, usually when this kick back, there's something else that I can tell is off. Other people don't necessarily kick back. They just feel some type of way about it because they're not ready to deal with themselves. And some other people just don't want to ever deal with themselves. But they are not to the extent where they are so manipulative that it's infecting, affecting other people's lives. So this brings me down to an episode of uh, um, Love is Blind that I think everybody should watch. And I mean, I, lo I loved season one. I haven't watched the other seasons because I haven't had a TV between then and now. And then I, with a colleague two weeks ago, um, sh we, I started watching season five. And episode one was wild <laughs> because I've become so sensitive to recognizing toxic traits in people that when I watch Ushe do his sit down with the girl that he supposedly wanted to get engaged with there were so many red flags in their conversation that nobody seems to get I watched commentary on this episode after it played and commentary with the with the bri of Ish Ushe on the second last episode and then, not the, sec yeah, the second last episode bef uh, uh, before the finale. And then I watched the finale and some of the conversations around Ushe. And everybody surrounding this conversation hasn't seemed to identify. Other than, the what's the girl that he was dating? That Ushe is a full-blown narcissist. Like, let me start here. 
if you're going to watch season one or, or season five and you've watched or you have watched it and you need to go back i suggest you go to episode one and just slowly watch how he takes apart the conversation on cheating i have never seen in full display the emotional manipulation to subdue someone so for those of you who haven't watched it and who are not going to go watch it he ends up in a date with this girl that he really now likes right and love is blind is a show where people don't see each other they fall in love emotionally and then propose before they actually get to see each other so he has this girl that he's been chatting to and her cheating two years prior comes up and he doesn't hold space for her at all what he in, in he starts doing is questioning her character like i have like it was so crazy to me that he went straight for the throat on this he goes for her character the kind of person she is why it was so recent that she cheated has she never considered that this may be her that's the problem which is why and she's making excuses about the relationship being bad like he chose every possible way to beat up her character in that process for one reason and one reason only he needed to make sure that that part of her brain that has the fight or flight had to make a decision i if i choose you as my partner and my fiance when you propose what i now know based on our conversation is that i am not allowed to even engage with other men in this way based on the fact that i am a bad person for cheating on someone two years ago no one has ever broken it down like that this is such a careful way to manipulate someone you know literally this was within three days of them knowing each other and he was so calculated in the way that he manipulated her into believing she was a bad person so that when he proposed he would already have some level of control over the way she thought and moved in their relationship and you know she ends up leaving right she packs up her stuff and she goes and she doesn't tell anybody and in my mind i was like this girl's instincts knew something was wrong she needed to bolt because he attacked her besides the fact there were other things going on his ex-girlfriend was also part of the, the process the, apparently neither of them knew they were going to be there uh, based on his, some of the things that he said i have questions but if you just I, w- i want you to watch their entire interaction and just carefully watch how easily and carefully he makes sure to bring down her boundaries so what most people don't realize about narcissism and manipulation is the tactic is and i have a visual of this is that i'm a human i'm safe i'm a safe person i value uh, vulnerability which means i also know what is safe and what, is, what isn't safe for me based on my experience so i have these multiple different walls up These walls are not necessarily impermeable. If I interact with someone that I deem to some level safe, the walls will slowly come down one at a time, right? Someone who's been in a traumatic situation who comes from trauma generally has more permeable walls because what they're looking for is an attachment that makes them feel like someone wants them, not that they are seen. you feel like someone loves you and wants you and that's important so i'm going to let down all of my safety walls just so that i can let them in because i'm afraid to let them go now what manipulation does is push on those walls right i'm going to push a little bit on this wall and see if you drop it because it's and i'm going to do this in a manipulative way i'm going to make you feel some type of way about yourself and see if you're going to drop that boundary Someone who's usually not healed from trauma is going to drop that boundary because they are more afraid of losing the connection than they are of protecting themselves. <laughs> If you really think about it, most people are wired this way because we don't intentionally actually do healing work and recognize that boundaries are super important, right? So, throughout this conversation, you watch him push on the wall a little bit and she gives way. Then he pushes on the next one and she gives way and he keeps pushing until she's in tears. feeling really terrible about herself and it's just like besides herself over the fact that okay she must be a horrible person because she hurt someone and she never had the guts to tell them come on 
And he was so bold in the way that he had addressed it. Now, look, I wasn't going to talk about this until I watched the season finished, which is why I'm only talking about it now. Because it then subsequently came to the fore that at this party that they had prior to the weddings, um, he had already constructed an entire narrative about his ex-girlfriend who was part of uh, 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 the, the show as well, who had now gotten married to Milton. Um, he'd already constructed this narrative around her that she's stalking other people, that she's she's not great, that um, he realized uh, uh, that that uh, uh, um, that she came to the house. What did he say? That she came to the house and took a picture and said, oh, I see you. He made this entire scenario so that he could protect himself. And then eventually it came out that he had cheated on this girl, which she had predicted throughout the entire experience. <laughs> This woman went out of her way to protect this man and he had built up this entire story to protect himself to make her look like the bad guy. And then she ended up getting married to the most amazing, calm, perfect person for her. That is the wildest thing. You, you actually start to see who he is for real in that interaction. I wanted to talk about this because I haven't seen anything on TV. I don't watch shows, but I haven't seen anything where the display of toxic narcissistic behavior is so perfectly shown out and nobody recognized it because they do not have the education or the information when it is so important to have this education and information because you are going to walk into people like this in all spheres of your life if you don't come from families like that or you have family members like that you are going to walk into someone like that in work or other situations if you don't recognize them you don't know how to navigate around them and what you're intrinsically going to do is emotionally invest yourself in something that is going to damage you like break you we're not talking about oh they hurt my feelings no they're not going to hurt your feelings they're going to destroy your character and who you are that you have to repair from scratch based on their insecurity and I might sound passionate about this because I have lots of personal experience with this. But what I want people to do is actually just really start to recognize it. This is happening everywhere. These kind of personalities are so manipulating that they come off as really amazing people for quite some time until you really start digging. And the second you try to get them to become vulnerable is when you see who they really are. Because... What Ushay did, especially what, what is, which is what all these personalities do, is they 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 attack your character and whatever. And then when you start to call them out for things that are um, a little weird that they did, what they immediately do is either they go to rage and then switch the rage off. Like they can, this is so. This I want to actually do in depth studies on this. They have the rage moment and then in their rage moment realize I can't look like the bad guy here. And then they have a a. a a really intelligent way or clever way, I don't know if it's, that's the word, to turn that switch off. Like the crazy switch, the, the I'm going to be crazy switch, they turn it off. And then they become really calm. And then their voice becomes monotone. And then they're like, why are you behaving this way? You do realize that you're acting a little bit crazy. Because this doesn't make sense. If you watch that party, you will see who she pulled this move. I've experienced it personally more than once. And in the moment, the other person is just like, what is going on? Like, why are you behaving like bipolar in two seconds flat? You can't make actual logical sense of it. Um, and they do this because they try to make you look like the crazy person, especially if you're around other people. We don't know how to see these things. So what, what I want people to do is, Watch the episode if you want to. I think you see some of these little things come through. But I also investigate the people in your life um, who are not consistently the same personality-wise. They're this way there, then they're this way there. Then when you try to become vulnerable with them, they become really either aggressive or they shut down. And then when something, when you call them out on something, they run, they become super aggressive and then they turn it off and then all of a sudden get really calm. Or they just go silent on you like the, the, the those of them who are far closer to the psychopathic um range are the ones who can sit and stare at you for a couple of hours and not say two words literally like this is not even a movie all the stuff we see in movies happens in real life people <laughs> y'all just uh, you take the 
what's this the veil off of your face so you can see what's actually going on around you but yeah that episode is very insightful for me and i'm glad it's something that's on tv i just wish more people who are well known would have pointed out those things so that especially people who come from abusive backgrounds or people who 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 don't know how to keep their boundaries up strongly and protect themselves can identify this in the potential friendships and relationships um and understand that they need to do some healing work on themselves so they don't walk themselves into these horrible situations because i can guarantee if ushua had ishu ushua had in, got in engaged with this girl and say subsequently with the reunion did try and do something and then she recognized that things were off god saved her y'all if they had gotten engaged and gotten married two years down the line that woman would have been so emotionally abused she wouldn't have known how to pick herself up and he would have what he did in that episode episode 1 if he if he pulled it in episode 1 he was going to do this every day that they spent together make her character zero so she feels like she's nothing unless he wants her <laughs> it's such a clever way to control someone anyway yeah i just hope this is a good education piece i i, I hope that people actually learn from it because yo i don't want i i'm tired of getting messages from people who are going through this and can't understand what happened when this happens first interaction so you need to be able to identify it not to get caught up uh do the healing work y'all but yeah that's me